All right, today on the table of the M&P 15 Sport 2. Now the barrel does have a consistent profile all the way back. This isn't like an M4 cutout or anything. Uh, your handguards do not have the metal heat shields underneath. Uh, it's kind of a crappy feeling plastic. I don't really think that's an issue because most people are going to change these out. But now all the handguards fit together. It's really good. It's nice and consistent all the way through. There's no wiggling between them. The fit between your upper and lower, there is some wiggling. And the color doesn't match. It's not even close. Now this rifle is pretty cool because it's a budget rifle and say you're going to buy this and put on a magnifier or some sort of glass, you can just fold this down and it'll fit under most of them. Which I like a lot because if you were to buy like say an M4A3 that has a carrying handle on here and you decide to put on a magnifier or glass, you're throwing away the carrying handle so you're just wasting money. This can just stay on there as a backup site. Now the hammer on the trigger is not mil-spec, and I don't know if this part is mil-spec or not. So here's your trigger brake. Action brake's pretty clean for an AR. Uh, your, trigger guard, your trigger guard is a part of your lower receiver. Inside the rifle. Uh, your bolt carrier, it is staked, and this is chrome lined. Now this is an AR-15 bolt carrier, not an M16 bolt carrier. I think you can pretty much look at that one of two ways. Either, you know, I'm never going to run full auto anyway, so why have that extra weight on there? Or two, you know, if they ever do lift the 86 band, I'd like to have an M16 bolt carrier because that'll be one less part I'd have to buy to convert this to full auto. Now your lower receiver, like I said this is not a mil spec hammer. The lower receiver also isn't as the same spec as a lot of AR-15 lower receivers. This is what they call a high shelf lower receiver. That's where it measures on my little pin right there. Now what that means for your average consumer is you're not going to be able to run an AccuWedge in there because there's just not enough space to tighten up the slot between the upper and lower. It also means if they lift the 86 band, this is going to have to be milled. You will not be able to put a drop in auto sear in this. Which I don't like because if they do lift the 86 band and I want to go full auto, you know, for like 4th of July weekend, I can just throw in my auto sear, a couple of other quick parts, run full auto, then take them back out and I can still use it for hunting and stuff. If you were to convert this to full auto, it would be a permanent toy. You cannot use that for any sort of sporting purposes unless in your state it's okay to. This is what your standard lower receiver would look like. Goes much lower. This would fit an AccuWidge or a full auto auto sear. Now your stock is your six position mil spec stock. So if you were to replace this, you want to go with the mil spec diameter. But all in all, this is a pretty good looking rifle, and they come and add in an excellent price point. I love the white lettering M&P symbol right there. They also got a symbol on top in white. The Smith & Wesson logo looks really cool. Got it engraved right there on the barrel. This is a 5.56, so you could run 2.23 or 5.56 in it. You also get a logo right there on the stock. And you get a 30 round PMAG. But thanks for watching. Leave in the comments below if the bolt carrier and the lower receiver is an issue for you or not. If that would make a buying decision, if that would turn you against buying the rifle, or if you'd still buy it anyways. And don't forget to subscribe.